and welcome once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. And at the end of the series of tubes and wires we call the internets is Joe Crazy Rider. How you doing today, Joe? Hang on, hang on, I'm coming, I'm coming. Holy shit. Have we started again? Yes, we started. Oh, man. And I missed the opening. I started without you. You are a rat bastard. Uh, uh, Uncle rat bastard. Nope, not my uncle. I'll have you know, I could be down at the Commodore Hotel enjoying cocktails at the Bootleggers Bottles and Bond event, celebrating local distilleries. Wait, but, Bond? Oh. Bond? James Bond? Podcasting with you. And the listeners appreciate it. Well, and... So and the sponsors my, appreciate it. My wife and uh, daughter, because I'm going to be the uh, designated driver as soon as this here podcast is over. Well, not only that, they don't have to put up with you while they're drinking. Well, not only that, <clears throat> but I had the house alone to myself today, so... Uh-oh. I had lots of fun. It, it, you just had no no transportation. Yeah, that's that's part of it. I mean, I, 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 I mean, you're going to make me do my freaking right away, but, uh, you know, my youngest daughter now, she's got herself her license. And, uh, license to thrill? Well, better not, because she's... License to truck. kill? My truck. <laughs> my truck. She's driving my truck. Well. With its brand new tires, so I guess I, I, guess I, I feel better about that. I, I don't mean, know. It's not the uh, the fact she's got her license and now she can drive. Might not be your truck anymore. She's got her license now. She can drive. <laughs> On the plus side, I was able to let her since I I kind of planned today to just be home and uh, catch up on my eBay and since mm, I did a lot of it before the uh, con and and then I had all this fun stuff from the con to put on eBay. So I let her take the car to school which means I got to sleep till 11 p.m. a.m., that is. I went to sleep at, like, 3 a.m. But I also... What were you I doing up, up that late? Watching e-bang. debates? E-bang, of course. Oh, please. Yep. And then I... Uh, well, and then you were up, too. I mean, every time I turn around, you're sending me a, a Facebook insta-message thing. I was at work. A, oh, a likely excuse. I've been at work all the time. I got up at about 10 a.m. and I was like, oh, man, do I really want to get up? It feels so good to be in bed. Next thing I know, it was 11 a.m. So I was like, well, I'll take care of that. Then you had to get up. Because if you're in bed at actually, noon, you're a slacker. No, actually, I didn't have to, but I did anyways. I take that back. I had to because I had to get the uh, eBay winnings that people did over this long holiday weekend and uh, get it up to uh, the post office. And since I have a box that picks up at like 1 o'clock nearby, I walked over to it, which was kind of cool. It was actually a very nice day out um, as we talk. And then, of course, it's supposed to rain overnight and temps drop about 20. And Yay! basically it's back in the fall instead of the uh, 70-ish summer. I like it when it's fine. fall. I like fall, too. You know what else mm. I like? Pie, redheads, hiding in your cave instead of going to cons. Previews. ECs. Oh, previews. <laughs> you got a lot of things you like. See, how was that? That's that's what we of the professional radio business call a segue. Yeah, now, now all we need to do is become professionals and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have something there. Do I, do, do I have to be a professional? Why, I'm not. Okay, good. I got right here at my desk, previews, which is goddamn huge. Now, Joe, do you ever look at the spine on the previews? Uh, not so much the spine. Okay, because you see there's a comic on the front that they're pushing, and this yep. it's uh, Justice League versus Suicide Squad. Yep, yep. On the back, there's one they're pushing, and that's uh, Motor Crush from, from, from the, the image. Yep, yep, yep. But on the side is Uber Invasion from Avatar. 
And uh, I, I, I have to be honest, every time I've picked up an Avatar book, it's like, oh, wow, I like this writer. This sounds like a cool idea. Oh, this is nothing but blood and gore and, and boobs. Things in your teeth. Dead, burnt bodies. I want to kill. 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 Well, then Avatar's the publisher for you, I guess. Yes. Plus they have tons and tons of variant covers. Oh, everybody's got a bajillion variant yes. covers. But uh, looking through the previews, we're going to do that. We haven't done that in a while. Ah. I have to say, my overall thoughts on this one's previews, boring. <laughs> so we're talking October for December delivery. Yes. And so I, this is Christmas stuff. I just didn't see a lot of things that really, you know, got me by the, oh, my God, i got to buy it. I'm going to die. Why do I got to wait two months for it to be delivered? I saw a few things I was excited about. Uh, some things I'm interested in, and we'll get to it. But, I mean, I didn't see anything that would make me, you know, go insane for it. Insane in the membrane? I, I've stunned him into silence. Joe, looking at Dark Horse, anything jump out at you? Ah, uh, let's see, Dark Horse. One book, Black okay. Hammer. And if you excuse me a bit, I'll look it up. Um, I think the first issue was in my box. Uh, so this is one of those, as I read it, I was interested in the description. And uh, Page now, of course, 57. Thank you. I was going to say most people do it, you know, alphabetically, but not, not any of these assholes in the previews, maybe <laughs> at Marvel or DC or anybody else. Uh, Black Hammer, Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston, and Dave Stewart. Uh, it's a, well, let's put it this way. If you were going off just number six, you probably wouldn't buy it. But I believe it has something to do with uh, some type of superhero, and I'm not quite sure. It says, Madam Dragonfly has been harboring dark secrets for hundreds of years, keeping them locked up in the mysterious cabin of horrors. Now that her cabin is trapped on Black Hammer Farm, only secrets she can collect are the broken hearts of small folk. But the arrival of a new visitor f to farm will change everything. Um, you know, just by that, I mean, I, I, I question why I'm buying this even. <laughs> well, Jeff Lemire is a very good writer. Um, the artist I do not know. But... Uh I don't know. It did not jump out at me. It did not jump out at me. Okay, Black, Black Hammer 1. This is why I bought it. It says, once they were heroes, but that age is long since past. Banished from existence by a multi-universal multi crisis, the old champions of Spiral City now lead simple lives in a timeless farming town. Everything they try to find their way home, even as they try to find their way home, trouble has a unique way of finding heroes wherever they are. That's why I bought number one. I mean, going off number six, I would probably be like, no, no. Boring. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why I picked it up. I thought it was just an, an interesting take on superheroes. Uh, like I said, I got number one, and I'll probably wait till I get all six together and read it as an arc, unless he's going to continue. Uh, a lot of times, these guys, they will do story arcs. Like, this month, I don't have Gene Ha. It's May. There's no Gru. Uh, so, you know, if it's an arc, I'll sit down and read it. Well, I Gru, like it. The I'll Gru story it. ended. So yeah, last there's month. a trade. But it's just one of those things where, and this is, you know, I'll complain about this when we get into some of the other publishers. It's real tough to remember sometimes, yes, I am ordering this book, especially when it doesn't come out month to month to month. And uh, I commented, I think, a few podcasts back that uh, actually there were a few publishers that were actually, hey guys, this comic isn't coming up this month, but it will be here in two months, which is always greatly appreciated, because nothing drives me crazier to sit down and decide, okay, I'm going to read Black Hammer, I got one, two, three, five, and six. What the hell happened to four? <laughs> and, you know, we're actually pretty good because between the source and Hot Comics and Captain Jacks and some of the other guys in town, I have a place I can go get them. And, you know, you'll probably get them on eBay, too, if you don't mind paying a little less than cover and, you know, $3 shipping. 
So I think that's a big big problem, you know. And I do like it when they when they do say this is the end of a story arc or this is the beginning of one. So, anyways, that's the only dark horse I got. Um, the ones that jumped out at me, the Erie Archives, Volume 23, it reprints issues 109 to 113, which means they're getting toward the end of the 70s. Uh, here's some of the creators who were working at uh, Erie back then. Doug Mench, Larry Hama, Bruce Jones, Paul Galassi, Val Merrick, uh, Jose Ortiz, uh, Bill Dubay, who was also an editor there. I, I always enjoy the the uh, Warren reprints, and then right next to it is a kind of an odd odd choice for an EC archive. They're doing the EC archive of the book Valor. Now, they haven't finished the horror or the science fiction or the crime or any of that yet, but they're doing Valor, which was part of the New Direction. And the New Direction were the books that EC did after the Comics Code came into effect. However, the first issue um, did not have the comics code on it. It was uh, later issues that had the code. And it was, uh, EC couldn't do their horror or um, crime comics anymore, so they tried a bunch of other stuff. One of them was Valor, which were like medieval tales of knights and stuff. Um, your artists that you had, you had Wally Wood, you had Al Williamson, you had Reed Crandall, you had George Evans, you had Graham Ingalls. Bernie Krigstein, so some really great art. The stories are uh, lame, I think is the best way to put it. This was not one of EC's greater titles, but the art is, you know, it's it. these artists have been working at EC for five years now, so they've pretty much worked out any kinks. They were at the top of their game. If you're an art person or a completist, pick this one up. If you read EC for the twist ending stories, you can go ahead and skip it. And uh, that was really it for me with Dark Horse. Uh, Joe, what jumped out at you at DC? Most of it's just books that I buy. Uh, I noticed the uh, the uh, Futurama, or I don't know what you call it. Not, not Futurama, but like the Flintstones, Future Quest, Scooby-Doo. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to hang with Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. Um, and I actually, I think I have more fun with Walking Dead in terms of my apocalypse stories, but um, I did see Scooby-Doo team up. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I did see Scooby-Doo team up number 21. It had Harley Quinn in it. I'll probably order a copy just to read it, sit on it for five years, and sell it for outrageous money since every other weird Harley Quinn appearance has gone up in price. And I doubt that people will be jumping out of their way to get this one until it comes out. And then it'll be, oh, my God, I, it's a Harley Quinn. Ah, I didn't get uh, it. The two big ones of the month I'm kind of on the fence about. JLA versus Suicide Squad and Supergirl being super. Uh, the JLA is a six-issue series, $5 books. I'm real tempted. You know, it's one of those things where I'm not sure if I like it or not because it's not being written by the regular team. Then again, I'm not sure I like the regular team yet. But I don't know if I would pick it up in book form or if I want to wait and do it as a trade. Same thing with the Supergirl one. Those are $6 books for a four-issue series. Really, if I'm going to like it, I would just buy the trade or probably the hardcover because they tend to cough up hardcovers. Uh, you know, I've talked a lot about DC Rebirth. I've got more Rebirth books that I haven't read yet. But if you want to look at the, the list, Action, Justice League, Supergirl, Titans, Trinity, Doom Patrol, Wonder Woman, uh, miniseries, Batman 66 meets Steed and Miss Peel, Six Pack and Dog Welder, uh, Direct Currents is coming out, which should be interesting. It's a freebie magazine that hopefully will give you a little bit more preview of what's coming up. Because a lot of times in, in when I go through previews, especially if it's a company like Marvel, DC, Image that I've been, you know, if you don't catch me with the writer, the artist, if I don't have an art sample, you know, you got one paragraph to win me over. And uh, tell me, Corey, did you, were you, have you been on board since Walking Dead number one? 
Yes. Oh, my God, you got a $1,000 comic in your collection. I've told this story before. I'm the one who told Christy to order extra. The and, question is... And then she didn't pull one aside for me. Oh. So I have two, three, four, five. But the uh, number one, she didn't pull one aside for me when I came in on Friday. They were all gone. She was wow. like, you were right about Walking Dead. And I said, oh, cool. And I flipped through. Where's mine? Um, I pulled it. And I flipped did, you, did you run to Schindler's and get one, or did you don't not have one? I don't have one. Because I went, ah, screw it, I'll just pick up the first trade. Yeah. I wasn't thinking about it. The question is, what got you to buy it to begin with? Um, Robert Kirkman. Okay, name. Well, no, he wasn't a name yet. He had done an interview on a podcast where he said he was a huge fan of the George Romero zombie movies, but he always wanted somebody to do a story about what happens after. And I was like, and I had written two zombie novels that were the same premise. His was a few months after Civilization was fallen. Mine are five years after Civilization has fallen. But I, and you also have to remember, there wasn't tons and tons and tons of zombie stuff out there. There had been Dead World, and that was about it. And Dead World came out about as often as uh, I go to McDonald's for a cheeseburger. I'm a vegetarian, and even before I was a vegetarian, I didn't eat McDonald's. So I was like, oh, cool, this will be great. And then when I started seeing the art, it's, this is going to be good. So I told Christy to order heavy, and she bumped her order up. I think I talked her into doing 50% more than she would have ordered so I think she ordered like 30 or 40. And they were gone. They were just gone. But that's what, that's what piqued my interest. The good yeah, thing was they did reprints. You know, they had that trade yeah. out the same week as issue six, if I remember right. Uh, too bad. Yeah, well, it happens. I just, it's interesting because I had a friend of mine just contact me. He has two copies in fairly nice shape. I wanted to know his, the opinion, should I keep them or sell them? And I was like, if you got two, sell it. Sell and, one know, now, but man, in the longer that show goes, the more they're going to be worth. And the other thing is, like you said, uh, a lot of people didn't or, or were not paying attention to it when it first came out. So... You know, it's not, I, I, can't, I can see it stopping. I can see the demand leveling off. You're never going to get a reader to drop a 1000 bucks to buy it, but there are people who will do it. He's thinking of getting it slabbed, and I was like, oh. oh. If it's in good shape, he better get it slabbed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some crazy. Or find Kirkman to autograph it. That's the other thing that's driving eBay prices. Problem is you can't even look on eBay to figure it out because so many people spam the keywords, and they've got all the other... Uh, you know, number ones, the image first, uh, yeah. the reprints, or so you know to just find a natural Walking Dead one. I think I was at about a thousand bucks before I actually found one that wasn't slabbed. So, but that's not really what we're talking about. The question is, what type of things in uh, DC are you looking forward to? Uh, the first one is Batgirl's doing a story, Return to Burnside. And uh, Burnside was where the, uh, the Batgirl drawn by Babs Tar was set. So I'm interested in that. I also find it interesting that with Nightwing, they're going to do a return to Bloodhaven. I did see that. So those are two kind of interesting things that I think could be, you know, could be fun. Um, we didn't talk about the fact that it's back, but uh, two of my favorite creators are back at D.C., after being away for a while, and that is Art Balthasar and Franco are doing superpowers. Yeah. Right next to Scooby Apocalypse. So, really excited about that. Uh, very happy to see it. Also, on page 127, it's also under IDW, is Love is Love. It, this is an anthology put together by Brian Augustin, who was here for the... Uh, Spring convention for the Troll Lords reunion. After the Orlando shooting, he basically put out a tweet saying, hey, I want to do a fundraising comic for the victims of the Orlando shooting. And everybody who contacted him, he put this thing together, 
and it's coming out in December. I'm very excited about it. Um, if you're into the trade paperbacks, the DC Rebirth stuff is already get, hitting the trades. And for the you know, older, I almost feel sorry for somebody if you were waiting for the trades, because that's a lot of freaking money to drop in a single month, especially if you think you're going to try to get them all. Well, but it's what, six, five or six issues per book. It's still a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I don't see how DC could not publish that many, but boy, as a retailer, looking at that shit, I wouldn't be too happy with it, because that's a lot of money DC's hoping to get out of me, and they better ship them damn books in the beginning of the frickin' month so I have a chance to sell them during Christmas. Any of that <laughs> stuff starts coming out during that infamous skip week between Christmas and New Year's, I'll just, I, would, I would crack each one in half and return them damaged. Because there's just no way, no way you're going to get stuck with that type of inventory. I mean, that's just a, a not a well thought out grab. I'd be real curious to see how stores order this. I mean, obviously stores like the Source, Hot Comics, Mega Stores, they could probably afford the money to drop, or maybe people they'll just order it real tight. And. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just, I can't see a small store dumping that much change on something. Maybe DC's got a returnable program, but I don't know if they would do that necessarily now that they nope. know Rebirth is a hit. What it is, it's once they get a certain number of issues published, they're going to publish the trades, and DC has pumped up. you know, you got to remember, they're doing two a month on most of these books. So you're going to get a new trade every two to three months for each of the series they're doing that with. So, um, the other thing that I found interesting is, for Justice League, they've actually started a new omnibus, because they were doing Justice League omnibus, well, now they're doing Justice League, the Bronze Age omnibus. So, they've kind of jumped ahead on that, and um, Green Lantern and the Silver Age, they're doing that as omnibuses. For me, I've got, I've got this stuff in um, their showcases, and... For me, the 60s and, and early 70s DC is a hard slog. Oh, because yeah. the stories are so similar, and it's all around a gimmick. You know, the hero has to figure out what the gimmick is that will defeat the villain. So it's kind of a puzzle story, and once the gimmick's figured out, oh, there you go, it's figured out. Not Whereas, to mention Superman getting knocked out by carbon monoxide. But the... I think that's why the Marvel, Silver Age, and Bronze Age stuff, I can read a bunch of issues in a row, because it was more based around the soap opera, and more, uh, it wasn't, how do they figure out the puzzle, it was more, okay, how do we figure out how to beat this villain, plus we've got all the soap opera stuff going on, and you had Kirby's creativity powering so much of this stuff, so I, I'm not really big on the Bronze Age, and Silver Age of DC. Um, Young Animals, I'm still waiting on the trade for those. I'm hearing good stuff, but it, there's nothing in comics right now where people are going, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever! Yeah. So, I don't know, the Young Animals stuff, it just feels like, oh, we're redoing Vertigo. Yeah, I, other than Doom Patrol, which again is on the, uh, well, let's see what happens by issue 6 mode. Uh, I don't, I, there's very little of that I'm buying. Uh, over to IDW. What's jumping out at you here, Joe? Well, you know, I'm a sucker for the John Byrne photo Star Trek, which I absolutely enjoy. I did notice he's got a 100-page wonder called Cold War, which is actually something he drew. So that might be kind of fun to look at. And I wonder if that's... Because we're hearing more and more that he's got all these pitches he's done that nobody picked up. And it might be he's just, yeah, you know, IDW's publishing my stuff. I might as well just get it out there and make a little bit of money off of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, re the normal stuff, I'm still sticking with ROM for a while. Uh, the Revolutionaries, number one, I'm curious about. I, I did pick into the crossover. It's in my box from Box Day, and I haven't read it yet. Uh, as far as regular stuff, Insufferable, Mark Wade and uh, my good friend Pete Krause, Ragnarok by uh, Simonson, 
and uh, Bo Smith's Winona Earp. Uh, even though it's a miniseries legend dealing with, uh, uh, I forget who he's dealing with. I didn't see any uh, trades. He's dealing with uh, Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday, that's who it was. Uh, no trades, no uh, no uh, books, uh, you know. Oh, there's one book. I can't afford it, but oh, I uh, want it. Well, that's part of it, you know. <laughs> Mike Kaluta's complete Starstruck Artist Edition. Ha <laughs> uh, Mike Kaluta is an artist that a lot of modern fans don't know a lot about because he did not, he hasn't produced a lot of work. Uh, he came to everybody's attention when he did The Shadow at DC in the 70s, which I'm amazed nobody's put out a nice book of that. Um, DC put out a complete collection of it back when they had The Shadow in the late 80s. And then he went over, and for some reason Marvel did a um, did one of their Marvel graphic novels of Kaluta and Denny O'Neill doing a shadow story. He's done very little since, and his stuff, very detailed, very atmospheric, very beautiful, um, very fine lines to his art. His art is, uh, I don't want to say delicate, but it's moody and and... And it's not the fine line you think from image where it's scratch stuff. It's no. The, the line varies, so you can tell he's doing it with, with, um, with a brush. But, oh, his stuff is amazing. Um, I wish somebody would just pay him to do shadow stories for the rest of his life. Because nobody's done the shadow as well as he did. Nobody. And then, um, if you're ordering Love is Love, it is from IDW. Uh, Joe, are you still there? Sorry, just had the thing on mute for a while while I was shuffling stuff around, getting ready for the next comic publishing company. And that is Image. Yep. Eclipse um, Frontier Ringside, that's it. Um, one of our uh, listeners, Mario, uh, wanted to highlight the Beowulf hardcover. From yeah, I saw that. And I looked at it, and it looks very cool. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not, but uh, there's a two-page preview, and the art is... Whew, that art's good. Mm. Uh, trade paperback of Midnight of the Soul by Howard Chaikin. And you know me, I'm a Howard Chaikin fanboy. I will pick up anything Howard Chaikin does. Anything. Mm. I picked up the uh, the comics. So, and I, like again, four is in my box. Got to find one, two, and three, and I'll read them all together. <laughs> And then the other one that's there that I'm uh, wavering on, We Stand on Guard, which was by Brian K. Vaughn and Steve Scrouse. They're doing a deluxe hardcover. We Stand on Guard is set in the future when America has fallen, and we are at war with Canada, and there's giant robots, and it's Brian K. Vaughn, and it's Steve Scrouse, and it's giant robots. See, a lot of this I will probably look and buy it as a trade. Because I'm just to the point now where I can't afford to get all the number ones, only to find out I either don't like it or, you know, it'll come out and then disappear and never be seen again. So that's why there's very few. Savage Dragon's one that I do buy, but it's not offered this month. And I'm just trying to find the, if I recall, Eclipse deals with a future society where if you go out in the sun, you get burned. Uh, I haven't read Frontier yet because number one hasn't shipped. And then Ringside's kind of a, uh, what would you call it, like a noir type story where it's dealing with an old wrestler kind of returning to the scene. And, of course, there's all sorts of stuff going on behind the scenes. Like here's a case of what I'm talking about. A ringside number ten that comes up. It's the end of the story arc, and ringside will return next year, February. You know that's the type of thing I need to know. I've taken so when I actually do a previews order, I actually have a small notebook and I just write everything down as I go through it. And then of course I have to flip back and forth several months to make sure I'm not missing a type of book that. I should have ordered because I'm trying to collect it. And, again, we're going to get up to a title that I'm going to uh, be freaking about because I did miss one, <laughs> despite the fact, you know, that I it's thought in I the notebook. Yeah. 
So, but this month, just three from Image, no trades. Uh, Marvel. Going Marvel's down, starting baby. Big, Marvel's starting their big crossover, Inhumans versus X-Men. Not sure I care. <laughs> I mean, part of me may, and there has been times in the past when I've tried to avoid a crossover only to hear everybody geeking about it, and then I'll go, you know, go to the source and pick it up. But, you know, I'm still doing the clone conspiracy, and I'm just sticking with Amazing Spider-Man, not buying anything else. I did pick up Avengers. You're not buying the clone conspiracy? I am. Well, you said I'm, you're just buying Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man well, and nothing clone else. clone conspiracy, Amazing Spider-Man, but I'm not buying Silk, and I'm not buying the other oh, one. Oh, okay. Ties into it. I'm still sticking with uh, Wade on the two Iron Man books. I got Avengers down because Mark Wade's doing it, and it's starting over. Did pick up the Unworthy Thor miniseries, although I don't pick up the regular Thor. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to Thanos. I am real wary about it just because I'm not, I've just finished reading everything Starlin's ever done about Thanos. And so it's kind of like, okay, go from a master to, okay, we'll see what you can do with it. Again, I'm kind of going just on the character uh, part of me thought, you know, maybe I should just wait. I got the Marvel Unlimited. I signed up for the deal that they offered, where it's five bucks a month. Uh, but we'll give it a shot. Same thing with Champions. As far as other titles, uh, Jessica Jones, number one, just came out, so I'll be reading that, probably talk about it next week. Uh, as long as Bendis is on Guardian, I'll follow it. Although I did notice Guardians was breaking off into a bunch of... Are they one-shots? Are they regular series? They're regular series. Uh, sorry, boys. You're losing me on that one. You're doing the same shit you did with X-Men, the same stuff you did with Avengers, not buying it. Now, if Bendis was writing it all, I probably would. The only reason I picked up Drax is because CM Punk was writing it, and I enjoyed the run thoroughly. But that's a lot of books just to be picking up all at once, and I just... You know, they might go like Red Wolf. They'll just go to six issues and quit. But throw all you want at the wall. I'm waiting for Marvel Unlimited on some of that. Uh, Doctor Strange I'm picking up. Uh, down to just Star Wars. They had something called Star Wars Classic Fied. Yes. A classic. It's a new Star Wars book that they are not going to tell us about until later. Don't know if I care. If that, you know, I don't want to play that game anymore because you're going to I don't want to give you eight bucks without knowing what the hell is going on and again if later on it it's the best thing since sliced bread fine but I'm not looking to pre-order it for any reason the only book I'm looking that I'm excited about is New Avengers by Bendis volume one because I do not have any Bendis Avengers in my collection even though when it did come out I enjoyed it thoroughly uh, we'll talk about this later, but that's the type of thing I do. It's just I get rid of the comics, I'll replace it with a graphic novel, and I think the comics I probably got rid of when I had crazy comics. And uh, who knows, I might still have some downstairs, but I mean, when I want to read the run, and I did enjoy Bendis's run on New Avengers quite a lot. And this, of course, entails, this book will cover a lot more. I think it covers the end of the Avengers, and then the beginning, and it also... Uh, hang on, let me see if I can my Marvel, handy-dandy Marvel pamphlet book. Let me whip this out. Excuse me while I whip this out. And, of course, nothing's alphabetical, so I can't find it. Well, I was just going to say, it, it has more than just the New Avengers run on it. So it's kind of like a, it covers the story, uh, pretty much of everything. Things I was looking at that I, I was contemplating, I'm, I'm looking a lot at that Doctor Strange epic collection, the one that uh, Engelhart and Brunner started. That is, uh, that book has already come out, I do believe. And when I do is, have with, those comics. With it's, the, uh, it's all like, oh, here are our available trades for, uh, for Doctor Strange, because there's a movie. There is a X-Men Legacy Omnibus, which actually sounded kind of interesting, that I don't think... Uh, it, it's not enough to really make me want that, considering a lot of those books you can probably find cheap. Uh, I cannot find that Avenger book for the life of me. Avengers 2.1? No. That's Aven the one I want to point out as a regular comic. Avengers 2.1. Uh, 
Uh, it is written by Mark Wade. It is run by Barry Kitson, the team behind what Empire, the comic where the supervillain is one and is kind of sad that. Uh, <laughs> He's won, and there's no more challenges. Uh, I am not a variant cover guy, Joe. You know that, right? Yes. I may get this variant cover. Because? Neil Adams drawing the Avengers. Ooh, that could be fun. I very, very want it. I want it, want it, want it. I wonder what it's priced. It is at... Well, the comic is three ninety nine. I haven't looked up to see how much a Neil Adams cover is, but I'll be honest, if they're selling it at DCBS for five bucks, I'm buying it for five bucks. Five bucks, five bucks, five bucks. Oh, here it is. Same cost New as a pizza from Little Seizures. New Avengers, Volume 1. It's the complete collection, so it starts with Avengers 500 to 503, uh, Avengers Finale, New Avengers 1 through 10, and then the New Avengers Most Wanted Vials. Uh, another epic collection I'm looking at, but I don't know if I'll buy, is the Incredible Hulk epic collection, which collects Hulk 407 to 419, Annual 20, Future Imperfect, the Ash Can, and the Holiday Special. See, a lot of these I may have already in another form, but I really like these epic collections because they're, you know, other than the fact they're in color, you know, plus a lot of times DBS will, will have them a lot cheaper. What other stuff are you looking at Marvel-wise? Um, trade paperback-wise, I did not give a damn about Nighthawk when it was announced. We talked about it a few episodes ago where people are, oh, it's so great, it's so great, it's so great. It has actually not shown up on Marvel Unlimited yet. So if it shows up on Marvel Unlimited and I read it and it's as good as people say, I'll probably order the trade. Um, if you have not read Avengers Endless Wartime yet, it is coming out as a trade paperback. This is a original graphic novel by Warren Ellis and Mike McCone. It is fan freaking tastic. It is. It's why I think Warren Ellis should just do standalone original graphic novels because then you don't have to worry about him losing interest and wandering off because he saw pretty lights. You got fifty bucks. Uh, yeah, but, uh, why? That's how much the Adams variant will be. Oh. Yeah, I'm not paying 50 bucks for a single yeah. comic. That's one of those, I don't know, maybe it'll stay up in value, but my my old partner, Peg Gruber, and I talked a lot about variants. A lot of times, if you wait, you can find them cheaper on eBay. Oh, yeah. So. There is also, uh, Joe, you know one of my kryptonites Marvel does, Marvel Monsters Unleashed Prelude yes. Trade Paperback. That's reprints um, the stories leading up to the Monsters Unleashed um, crossover, but also stuff from Strange Tales, Tales to Astonish, Tales of Suspense. Let's see, you got Gorgilla, Blip, Monstrum, Gratu, Moomba, Orgo, Bruto, Rumbu, Van Doom, uh, Goob, For those of you just tuning in, Corey is talking about old Marvel monsters. He has not had a stroke on the podcast. We don't know that. Well, no, because you were speaking good English. Goodly English. Now you're back. I was speaking it bigly. I think you should basically <laughs> cut and paste that entire thing as a Facebook status and just let people talk. <laughs> um, another book that I'm not going to be getting... But I'm, it's one of those where every so often Marvel will reprint something as a trade paperback, and I go, really? Huh? Wait, um, let me take a guess. Uh, Marvel Man Classics Volume 1? No, you know they're reprinting that because they yeah. spent a shit ton of money to get the rights. Yeah. What is the book where you looked through and you went, they're reprinting that? Uh, I don't know because I really don't pay attention to a lot. The Bruce Jones and Brent Anderson Kazars. Oh, oh, see that that went that went right over my head. I just like Kazar, huh? I remember that coming out and no one caring. And it, when Marvel did their direct sales thing, and they took three series to direct sales, it was Micronauts where I went, "Oh crap! I got to figure out how to get Micronauts." Moon Knight, oh crap! I got to figure out how to get Moon Knight. And then Kazar, oh, they're they're publishing another Kazar comic. And I looked, and during the seventies, Kazar they printed three different Kazar series. Yeah. Really? But I do remember this book. I read it when it 
uh, when I would find it in the in the quarter bends, and I was able to put together a whole run. And Brent Anderson, who's currently drawing um, Astro City, his art's really good. Bruce Jones's stories don't feel like Marvel stories. They actually feel like jungle adventure stories. This was an odd series. I'm not going to say that I liked it, but I also didn't dislike it. It was one of those where I read it, and I, it just didn't seem to fit. And I think it's because Bruce Jones was mostly doing um, horror and science fiction short stories over at Warren. And this was his first attempt at doing Marvel. I don't know why they're reprinting it. I have no idea in the world why they're reprinting it. And um, that's about it for Marvel. Uh, what was their omnibuses this time? Oh, there is a Doctor Strange coloring book. Um... Okay, the Legion Omnibus was a series that came out a couple of years ago. Marvel Masterworks are reprinting everything that leads up to Jack Kirby taking over. And then there is a huge Star Wars box set slipcase, which yeah. is 350 bucks, and it's basically the trade paperbacks for all the movies. So I'm just if looking you here online for uh, the Kazar books, and no one cares. cares. Yeah, I mean you could find them like three twenty nine or pay fifteen ninety nine for the trade. Yeah, and, and um, let's see the the other omnibuses. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Um, the buy. They are reprinting the Ed Brubaker Daredevil omnibus. Mm. They are putting out a War of Kings Prelude Road to War omnibus, which basically reprints all the stuff that led up to the War of Kings crossover. Mm. And I do like the Civil Wars 2 hardcover is supposed to come out in January. We just found out there will be a ninth issue of Civil War 2 that will come out in January, so that's not coming out in January. Not happening. I do want to point out there was one other secret thing that was kind of annoying. The Nova series. We can't tell you what's happening, but somebody's returning. Yeah, they, we all know who's returning. My brother. Oh, he wow. is. Oh, I didn't well, know he it. was Nova. I didn't even know he was sick. I All right. the crickets. Yeah, we do. We gotta. We gotta pay a, a fee to get them to at least make an uh, appearance, a guest appearance. Yep, yep. And then we get into the biggest Other. part. Now here it is. We're at page two forty-five of previews, and previews is uh, about six hundred pages long. Mm -hmm. So just the big five publishers are half the book. Well, not half the book. I would say a third of the book. And they have done studies, too, where the it seems like if you want to get placed in the comics or you want to actually have sales, the closer to the front of the alphabet you are, the better. Although I think Zenscope does pretty well. Well, that's why there was a comic that was, it started as Marcosia, and then they changed their name to Triple A Marcosia. So yeah, just so they could get in front of Aardvark Van Hame. <laughs> That's some good thinking there, people. <laughs> um, I, quite honestly, I, there's a whole lot of stuff here. I just want to point out some of the big things. Um, Archie has Reggie and me starting up. It's being written by Tom DeFalco, who started his comic career over at Archie. And there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten covers for Reggie and Me number one. Unfortunately, they're all the same price, so you can pick and choose the one you want. The, There's actually a book coming out that reprints the covers of all yes. the Archie books, which those are usually fun. But so where are they? What are they costing here? Where are they? Um, the Betty and Veronica cover book is four ninety nine, five ninety nine. Yeah, and the Archie's hand. and that's not a bad price if you if you want to just enjoy the cover art. And the Archie is right next who's. to it. And of course, we got another Afterlife, so that'll be canceled and come out later. <laughs> uh, the one uh, that two things jump out at me first is that their Dark Circle, which was their superhero line, is now down to just one book. I have not heard anybody say anything about their Dark Circle line. Do you think with the reboot of Archie that you could actually get more traction by having them be in the Archie universe? 
No. Well, I don't know. We've already had Jughead do the time thing. So, you know, they don't have to be in Riverdale. I think that every so often they toss them out there. They try to do something. But let's be honest. They don't put a lot of marketing muscle behind it. And it could just be, hey, you know, we have to renew the copyright and trademark yeah. on these things. Yeah, there is that. Um, the digest that I'm excited about, they put out a Archie's 75th anniversary digest a while back. And I thought it was just a one-shot to celebrate, but no, they're up to the fourth one. So it could be that they're going to put out one, you know, put them out for the whole year. And I've talked in the past. I love the Archie Digest. I do. The thousand pagers, those things are awesome. <laughs> I throw one, I, I, I have a bag I take to the group home for overnights and stuff. I've always got one of those in there in case I have trouble sleeping because, hey, there's enough reading for... Well, but, days. Anything jump out at you in the A's, Joe? Uh, Abstract Studios, the home of writer-artist Terry Moore, has a new series banging out called Motor Girl. Uh, I'll just read it. It says, running a junkyard in Blink, Nevada wasn't Samantha Mooney's first choice. Life wasn't in the top 500, but when she, an owner, the owner was abducted by a UFO, she was left to run the yard. I'll give it a run. I mean, i got to admit, Terry Moore's stuff read better in a graphic novel, but I'll give this a shot and see how it, it goes. I know his last one I kind of stuck with a little bit and then just dropped. Uh, the next publisher that actually jumped out at me was uh, Drawn and Quarterly, because I, I ordered their stuff a lot, but in they are um, putting out the Drawn and Quarterly 25 Years of Contemporary Cartooning, Comics, and Graphic Novels hardcover again. It's 50 bucks. This is a must-own book. They go through their history as a publisher. They reprint tons of their work. They have interviews with the creators. They go into the history. It is a 776-page book. I've had it for a year. I am only halfway through. The, the, first off, Drawn and Quarterly publishes some of the best stuff in comics. They publish Seth, all of his stuff. They published um, they published uh, the the Ernie, not the Ernie Bushmiller, the the Nancy reprints by Odgen Whitney, um, Seth, Joe Matt, uh, Chester Brown, on and on and on. They're a quality publisher, and this book has reprints of all the stuff they've done. Long interviews with the creators. Everybody from R. Crumb to Seth is in this book. This is, uh, if you're into alternative and indie comics, this is a must-own book. Could not get a higher recommendation from me. And like I said, I've been reading it for over a year now because I'm savoring it. You go through and they talk about the problems behind the scenes, the successes, dealing with uh, being a small publisher, all of it. Um, you're never going to get a better history on any comic company than this book. Um, the other thing that they've got out that they um, – Blankets is a book that I did not care for, but it won tons and tons of awards. And one of the reasons I don't care for it is because of the story structure and the, the sheer depression you get when you read it. But it's a very important comic, and if you haven't read it, you should at least like go to the library and, and get a copy and read it and see if it's something you want to own. Because the people who love it cherish that book. I did read it once. I sold it. I bought it again. Sold it. Bought it again. You see where I'm getting at it. I mean, it was a good read. I don't cherish it, but it definitely, like I said, it was worth reading. And if you can... I don't know if he's going to be doing discounts on it like he had in the past, but uh, if you can get a library copy or if you luck out when I'm selling my next copy on eBay, uh, it is worth a read. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm not. I'm in between. I read it. I enjoyed it, but I'm not. It's not a, like a fucking Bible to me, you know. Yeah. And it's something that if people want to. Read it. I mean, I definitely recommended it to my daughters to read. So, not one that I may recommend, 
is our comics Aryan Head Huntress, because that's the one I've been bitching about the whole show about. For some reason, I missed issue number four, but I got one, two, three, and five on order, and I think actually one and two may have already shipped already. So I'm hoping I can go back and uh, be able to pick it up somewhere, so I'm not too worried about it. But And if I am, it'll just go in the dollar bins. I don't know, whatever. From Dynamite. Dynamite! There's a couple I'm curious about. The one I'm excited about is Wonder Woman 77 meets the Bionic Woman. And much as I would love to have a photo cover, they don't have one. I'll probably go with the uh, Michael Adams action figure variant cover, which should be, they take a Mego doll and then a Jamie Summers doll and they put it like they're in a, in a package. I kind of like that. The main cover is actually pretty good too. So I'm kind of curious to see where they go. A lot of times these crossovers I found a lot of fun, be it either the ones from DC or, uh, you know, in this case, I think Dynamite's publishing the whole thing. If you're prone for Red Sonia or you just want to try it, they're doing a 25-cent cover. So, uh, obviously, I think a reboot of uh, Red Sonia is coming along. Yep, new creative team, uh, new number one, blah, blah, blah. The next publisher that I want to talk about is Fanagraphics. Uh, their, their certified cool book is The Life and Legend of Wallace Wood, Volume 1. This is written by Bob Stewart, who passed away a few years ago. I believe that they either announced this or actually solicited it as one volume. But when they were putting it together, it was too big, so they have split it into two volumes. Uh, Wally Wood was an artist who started at EC and worked in comics his whole life, uh, actually committed suicide when he discovered that he had, uh, basically he drank himself to death. He had drank so much that he was going to die, so he committed suicide. His art is unbelievably good, and Bob Stewart is someone who was actually around during EC. He's one of the biggest EC historian slash fans. Um, I was very privileged to get to know Bob Stewart online and talk EC with him Far more than uh, far more than I ever thought I would. This book is something I'm looking forward to. Um, I talk a lot about EC. If you're not one of those people who wants to pony up and get the archives, DC is actually publishing these hardcover books that highlight an artist. And the one they are putting out this month is The Million Year Picnic and Other Stories, and that highlights art by Will Elder, who's mostly known for his stuff on MAD, which was brilliant. But he also worked in the science fiction comics. So um, Million Year Picnic and other stories are stories by him. Some of them are adaptations of uh, Ray Bradbury stories. And it's a good way to get a sample of what EC was back in the day. And I swear that when you read it, you're going you're gonna to read this stuff and you're going to go, I can't believe this was in a 10-cent comic during the 50s. It's far away some of the best comics ever printed. Um, the other thing that they are doing, there is a fourth volume of Pogo. They're reprinting the Pogo comic strip. Um, I really enjoy it, but I think the humor, much like with uh, Bloom County, some of the humor is lost because of the pop culture references he put in really don't make any sense anymore. It's still a very good comic, but there are times I go... Yeah, I bet if I was around in 1947, I'd get this joke. What What's the publisher that jumps out to you next, Joe? Uh, nothing really jumps out. I did notice uh, uh, Batsalus' variant is finally coming out, Archer and Armstrong number 10, which he's been talking about. He's been working on these variants for years, and finally it's out. And I do enjoy his artwork, so I'll probably just pick up that. Other than that, it's just a lot of things that I just normally order. I mean, I order Knights of the Dinner Table. Uh, they got Cattle Punk Chronicles Volume 2, and I, I believe last podcast I talked about Chronicles 1, so that's always worth picking up. Uh, there is Here's a case, again, of, of where is the missing comic. There was Skyborn, which was a Frank Cho series out of, out of uh, Oni, and... 
one, two, and three were solicited out of the five issues. Uh, this month, there's no four. That's why, I, I, as a as a comic retailer, as a collector, that is frustrating as hell. Because you know, I talked about Ringside. They said, okay, it's going to be back in February. There are titles from Image that I've enjoyed that I have no clue if they'll ever come out again. And it's like, should I worry about it, or are they going to eventually just not come out? And this is another one. I mean, yeah, it's Frank Cho. It's con season. He's probably busy, or he's got behind, or whatever the excuses do that you can't do a five-issue series in five consecutive months. Um, again, a lot of the books that I normally would collect just aren't being solicited this month. Uh, well, what's the one that Xander Cannon? How do you, K- Kaiju Max? Kaiju Max, yeah. Kaiju Max. Uh, number six was the end of the story arc. Believe it or not, kids, at this point we had some technical difficulties, so we lost the rest of the discussion where Joe and I talked about uh, what we'd got in our box day. But that's okay. You, there's, there's still more. There's another section. You know who didn't have technical difficulties? These guys, our sponsors. Yes, here at Solitaire Rose Networks, we have ads. That's right, we have ads. Just like every other podcast. Come on, it's okay. Our first advertiser is our longest-running advertiser, and that's DreamHost.com. DreamHost.com is the best bar none web host all over the interwebs. You could go to other web hosts. You could go to the ones that have big ads on TV and everything, and they're not going to give you the service, the dependability, and and the reliability of DreamHost. Head on over to DreamHost.com. Use the code CRAZY, K-R-A-Y-Z, and get $20 off your first year of web hosting. Another of our sponsors is Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club has great blades at low prices, and let's face it, you gotta shave. Head over to shaved.by slash C19DC, get you some blades, they're wonderful, I use them, I use all of our sponsors. Matter of fact, head on over to crazycomics.com, over on the uh, right hand side of the page, you'll see all of our sponsors, Bombas, Grays, Flaviar, Dollar Shave Club, and DreamHost. If you would like to advertise on any of the podcasts in the Solitaire Rose Network, you can just email solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com, subject advertising. Sadly, we also lost most of the freaking and geeking. But don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. It's okay. We'll be back next week. We'll have freaking and geeking. We'll ha- we'll we'll ha- we'll have all kinds of stuff. So just think of it this way: uh, the episode we recorded was two and a half hours long. So an hour and a half of it's lost forever. But that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Here's the end of the episode. My God, we've talked for two hours and fifteen minutes. I know. Well, as what happened, we have a lot to talk about. Well, can I can I can I do my? What was the last? What was the last thing I said? Uh, you were you were still in your uh, geeking. What was the last thing I said? I don't know. Because you were just throwing out so many books. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, you were talking about the uh, artists, and when you go to the card show, you're thinking of getting another Supergirl drawing. Okay, and then I then I said, uh, okay, I'll just I'll just I think after that I threw it to you. That's probably when. Nope, I didn't hear you throw it to me. Okay, that's pretty much it for me, Corey. What are you geeking on? What's got you happy with life? Well, I complained a little earlier about Marvel Unlimited uh, being uh, not organizing themselves very well. I also want to throw in that uh, now that I'm doing those overnights again, Marvel Unlimited is my best friend in the world, <laughs> man. You are so fickle. <laughs> um, every Monday, they put new books up, and it's not just the books that came out, you know, like, I don't know, three, four, six months ago. But they're putting in a lot of older stuff. And this week they put in the Deathlock 90s series, including the four-issue miniseries, four-issue prestige miniseries that kicked it off by Dwayne McDuffie. And uh, I forgot just how good that stuff was. I forgot just how good Dwayne McDuffie was on Deathlock. Oh, my God, that was so good. Um, I have a non-comic book that I picked up when I went to the uh, Costco. Cool. I have talked in the past about how I am a huge Alton Brown fanboy. 
Alton Brown has a new book out, which is all the recipes that he has come up with since the end of the show Good Eats. And the even some of the Good Eats um, recipes, he's gone back and kind of tweaked them and made them better and in some cases made them easier and tastier at the same time. I'm a huge Alton Brown fan. Alton Brown kind of has taught me how to cook much better than I did uh, 10 years ago. And, um, yeah, Joe, Joe has enjoyed Alton Brown's goodness because Joe has eaten tons of cookies that I've taken from Alton Brown recipes. So No diabetic here. I also just want to say, you know, with, with Box Day, I am loving the new Archie line. The new Betty and Veronica is by Adam Hughes, is uh, quirky and weird and self-referential and breaks the fourth wall and is a lot of fun. And it's the first comic that uh, he's done in a long, long time. I missed Adam Hughes doing comics. Yes, he draws pretty girls and he draws great covers, but he is a hell of a comic artist. His storytelling is phenomenal. And then the last thing I got is, uh, with all these extra overnights I've been doing, and uh, the fact that uh, I don't have much of a social life that I had, like, oh, I don't know, four or five months ago, I am going to be, I, I, have, I have started a quest, Joe. I'm going to fill in my collection of Warren hardcovers by the end of next year. Cool. Because I believe they will be done with the reprints next year. And I'm missing about 20 to 25 I don't have an exact count. I've, you know, I've got my list, but I haven't counted it up. But every month that I come in under budget at DCBS, I'm going to throw in one or two more. So I should have the complete run of Eerie and Creepy in hardcover form by next year. So kind of excited about putting together. I haven't done something well, like that. You can move out of your mobile home and into a fortress filled with all these hardcovers. Damn right. I haven't Damn really. Great, Skippy. I haven't really been on a com, com, completion quest since the EC box sets. So uh, I, I will keep people informed on that. Cool. Believe it or not, kids, you've listened to us blather on about comic books for almost two hours. And oddly enough, it was all pretty much comics. So, as we say every week, the comic we like the least, we still like better than the comic that you uh, like the most. Joe? Did, did we get our ending from Dan yet? Yes. Okay. I have nothing to say. Uh, the ending goes after the music. Yeah, well, be the music and then the, we, are, we done, bitches. I don't want to hit music anymore. But we have to have music. It's boring. No, it's not. It's great. I I will tell you what. Now, uh, whatever. Hit the music. I don't know.